YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back with our week 16 score predictions and picks against the spread. We do this video every Wednesday afternoon. Straight up picks with the other guys already up for this week. Those go up every Tuesday night. We got power rankings. We had a lot more, some off-season videos rolling out now as well. We'll update our playoff predictions this week. We got you covered here at the Goat House, so like, subscribe, turn notifications on. All that much appreciated. Follow us on Twitter. It's on your screen. There's also a link pinned in the comments for that. Uh, and any of uh, our sponsors you're looking for there. So code GOAT on GLD Shop, Liquid IV. You guys know the drill. So we'll break down each game score prediction, then we'll recap all the against the spread picks. A lot of tough games with playoffs on the line this week. Uh, the Jags are underdogs. They are missing a few guys. Uh, Trayvon Walker, their one overall pick, is out. Cam Robinson's out for the rest of the year. Their left tackle. Uh, Fatakasi is out to one of their interior defense linemen they signed this offseason. So that's pretty tough, but the Jags have been rolling. Trevor Lawrence has been getting going. The playmakers have been getting going. I'd say Doug Peterson's been getting going too because they're starting to add a little bit more, a little bit more to that offense, and it's really throwing teams off there. So I like the way they've been playing on offense, defense. They create turnovers as well. The Jets uh, missing Mike White. If Mike White was playing, I'd probably probably be picking them in this one. You know, Zach Wilson playing. Doesn't I don't have full confidence with the Jets because of that, you know? And he, he almost brought him back against the Lions last week, uh, but a little sloppy. Obviously, the Jags create turnovers; they'll put pressure on him. Uh, and I just look at you know somewhat of a low-scoring game in the cold Thursday night football. I'm just gonna look for the team that has that extra play, that extra play in that game, and the Jags have those extra playmakers to make that play compared to the Jets. So. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Jags, 19-17, but they are underdogs by one and a half. Uh, Bills and Bears, a tough one to, if we're looking at the spread. Uh, minus nine, the Bills. I have them winning by ten. There's a lot of these th this week, a lot of a lot of, a lot of close ones. Uh, but I have the Bills winning by ten. Um, obviously, it's getting colder out there. It's gonna be freezing across the NFL. I was looking at the temperatures on all the all the outdoor games. It's gonna be freezing, so maybe a little bit lower scoring for some teams. Like the Bears, been scoring a decent amount of points, but for this week, you know, since Justin Fields has gotten going, especially on the ground, um, maybe this is the best defense he'll see in the Bills. So that kind of sides towards the Bills holding them to maybe a little bit less than what they've been scoring. But you look at the Bills last week, how they played against the run, the Miami run. They were struggling to tackle, so maybe they have some struggles tackling Justin Fields. Could see that as well. Um, but I think the Bills have success uh, on offense against the Bears, struggling defense this one as well. So I'm going to go 27-17, so just covering that spread. It's definitely not one I would touch, uh, you know, if you're going to put money on it, minus nine. It's, it's a perfect line by Vegas there. Uh, Saints and Browns. I like the Browns by four. Should be somewhat low scoring here. It's kind of how both these teams, the games that they've played, have been low scoring, and now they're playing each other. I think Nick Chubb has a really good game, and they focus on the ground game here. Uh, and I think he has a really solid game. I think Kamara could have a solid game as well. A lot of running clock. But I'm confident with the Browns. Their defense has been playing better. Run defense is still a little questionable. But defense is playing better. And they can create some turnovers, run the ball well. So I like them winning 20-16, to 16, covering that 2.5 there uh, on Saturday. A lot of these games on Saturday, obviously. Texans and Titans, another one. It's, it's real tough when it comes to the spread. Titans are missing a bunch of guys. It sounds like Malik Willis will be playing at quarterback who actually played against the Texans last time. Uh, and the Texans are missing Damian Pierce. They've been playing some good teams tight, though. Uh, Titans defense still kind of tough for them, especially without Damian Pierce. So I don't expect a whole lot of scoring. Uh, but and the Titans do just enough, mainly because the ground game. Derrick Henry always dominates the Texans. They have the worst run defense in football. Uh, and that kind of should be, could be the case. Don't really trust the Titans' play calling fully, though. Uh, but another one of those games with a lot of running clock. I'm going to go 19-16, so it's a three-point game, four-point spread. Wouldn't touch it. Could see it going either way if we're, if we're talking against the spread here. I guess the Texans have a shot to win this game. They've been, they've been playing better ball. The Titans have been playing worse ball. You know, So Texans have a shot to win. Um, them plus four looks decent, but I also can see the Titans winning by about a touchdown like last time. Derrick Henry's definitely going to go off. So that's a tricky one there. It's a must win for the Titans, though. Uh, Seahawks and Chiefs. 10 just seems like a lot. I know the Chiefs are maybe the best team offense, best offense or team. You could argue either way, both uh, in football. Seahawks defense is really struggling, so the Chiefs should score. Mainly those teams that re are really good running the football give the Seahawks problems. 
Um, Chiefs can run the ball when they want to. They mainly want to pass, though, which they'll, they'll be able to do that in the Seahawks, though. Uh, but I got them scoring 27. See, it's tough because they're missing Lockett, so will they score their usual amount of points? Maybe not. Give me a little chilly out there, no Lockett. So I have them scoring 20, but I still have them covering that. 10, 10 seems like a lot. I mean, I could see I could see a 31-20 to 20 final where the Chiefs cover, so it's a tough one. But 10 just seemed like a lot for this team like the Seahawks that should be able to move the ball on the Chiefs. Uh, you know, maybe keep it out of Mahomes' hands for, you know, a decent amount of time where they won't go into 30s and Seahawks should be able to put up around 20 points. So 27-20 Chiefs is what I got. Next game, Giants and Vikings. I think we can count on this one to be pretty close. The Vikings are favored by four. I got them winning by two. So I got the Giants covering there. Um, Giants, you know, the games they've lost, it kind of felt like it, two things. I think mainly they just haven't been able to score enough points. Offense a little underwhelming, maybe relying on Barkley a little too much. Uh, and then maybe another reason why is they can't really stop the run that well, but it's mainly because that option one, that first scenario. Uh, but against the Vikings defense, which did pick it up in the second half last week, they did play the Colts. Uh, I think the Giants should be able to put up more points than what they average here. Uh, and then they do play pretty solid pass defense. But they play man coverage, which I think the Vikings receivers kind of feast off of there. Uh, so it's a pretty decent match for the Giants. Should keep it close. A lot of Vikings games are close. Giants games as well. So 26-24. The only thing I worry about, um, if you're taking the Giants plus four, I do. I do. it's a similar matchup for the Giants is the Lions game, which the Lions uh, beat the Giants up pretty good. So that could be the case as well. If the Vikings just pound Dalvin Cook, uh, that actually might be better. They might have a better. They might have more success actually. Uh, and so it just depends on if they choose to do that. They're a pass-first offense, though. So we'll see. I think it's bound to be kind of close here, though. Two, three-point game somewhere around there. Uh, and the Giants realistically could win the game. So you feel a little better about the plus four with them too. Bengals and Patriots got the Bengals covering here. I like them by seven. Um, I know their Bengal, the Bengals are pretty beat up right now. I just like the matchup a lot. You know, I, I the only bad part of the matchup, one specific thing, is the Patriots have a pretty good pass rush. Uh, sometimes it looks dominant. I, I don't know, it kind of disappeared at the end of that Raiders game last week, but sometimes it's dominant, and uh, going against the Bengals' offensive line, uh, it could be dominant. And we've seen games where the Bengals' offense is very, very underwhelming. It's because Burrow is just constantly pressured. So that would be the reason the Patriots win if they do. Uh, but everything else I look at, uh, the Patriots' offense has been messy. It hasn't really been getting going too much. The Bengals' defense has been, even though they've been missing some guys, they've been playmakers back there. They've been pretty stout. Uh, Patriots' offense is just too slot, too too messy, too. So I, I just don't see them scoring a whole lot of points. And then, again, the pass rush could be a problem for the Bengals, but you know the Patriots are going to stick in their man coverage, and these receivers and Joe Burrow, they beat man coverage up. That's what they love to, that's what they love to play against because they beat it up so well. Uh, so I'm going to go, even though they're missing some guys here, I'm going to go the Bengals by seven points. So covering that three, it should be a little cold out there. I think the Bengals are built for it, though, you know. Uh, so I'm going to go with them 24-17. Uh, Lions and Panthers is a really tough one against the spread, too, because I'm, I picked the Lions, but I'm like, man, I could argue the Panthers. The Panthers could win this game. They could win this game. They play really good pass defense, which is good for you had to have going against the Lions. Uh, and, and they should be able to run the ball. Lions run defense has been a little better recently, but the Panthers should be able to run the, run the ball. So looking at it that way, like you could see the Panthers winning. Like It's realistic the Panthers could win the game. But look at the Lions. Their defense has been playing better. Also, Sam Darnold's out there. I don't really fully trust Sam Darnold. He's been all right for them, but I don't fully trust them. him. Um, so even though I could see the Panthers winning, I have the Lions covering at the same time by half, half a point. I would not bet on this one. I would not bet on this one at all. So, cause I could see, I feel pretty good about it being somewhat close. I mean, I see a scenario where the Lions win big too. I don't see a scenario where the Panthers win big, but I, yeah, I see this scenario, Lions winning big, Panthers winning by little. Uh, it's a tricky one. It's a very tricky one. Well, the Lions were home. I'd feel pretty good about them winning by more than I I'd be confident with them winning and by more than what I have. But the line would definitely be different. Um, so that's a tricky one there. But the Lions should be able to keep rolling here, take down Sam Darnold and the Panthers. Uh, next, it's a tricky one when it comes to the spread as well. Uh, you know, I'm with this prediction. I have Tyler Huntley at quarterback. Lamar didn't Lamar didn't practice again today. Over the weekend, it's like the Ravens expect him to be back. All right, and then but he didn't practice. 
the last two days. Wasn't spotted at practice at all. So this is what Huntley in there. I have the Ravens winning by seven in a very, very low scoring game. Therefore, the Falcons covered the 7.5, just extremely close. The Ravens just haven't been scoring a lot of points. It's just hard to trust them to score a lot more than any more than 17. Uh, but the Falcons with Ritter, uh, I mean, they were fortunate to not turn the ball over more. So maybe the Ravens can score off some turnovers as well. Uh, but they didn't really do a whole lot until the end, and they're playing a red-hot Ravens defense in this one. So I, I don't expect the Falcons to score a whole lot either. It's going to be cold out there as well. If Lamar plays... Seven and a half is a lot, but I think they cover that, and they're going to win. I think Lamar had a pretty, you know, if he's healthy, he has a pretty good day, you know. So um, that's that's this one's really tough. This one's really tough. Matchup definitely says Ravens, no matter who's at the quarterback position. Definitely says Ravens. I'm starting to think could the defense put them in position position to score or score where they'll be up where they can win by more than seven. It's possible as well. This one is just really close. I'm kind of hoping Lamar plays so that I'm very very confident with. With my pick, my against the spread pick, um, and Dobbins was limited in practice as well, or out of practice so far. That's tough as well. But I think just based on the way these two teams have been playing, we can count on it being very low scoring. Usually, the very low scoring games are somewhat close. So seven and a half does seem like a bit, even though I have the Ravens winning by seven. But again, Lamar plays. I'm gonna go. The line's probably gonna change. But if you have a feeling Lamar's gonna play and you want to jump on it seven and a half. Really not a bad idea. I, I'm just not too confident about him playing right now. Uh, Commanders and Niners is also a seven-point spread. Two very solid defenses. Two teams that are very solid running the ball. And the Commanders, you know, it might be tough to run the ball against the 49ers stout defense. But they do need to run it more than where they ended last week, uh, the second half of that game. Seven seems like a lot for two defensive teams. Commanders kind of like a must-win to kind of get back on track, pull off this upset, uh, you know, and... and Purdy's been playing good, but now a little bit of the tapes out. I think he'll still continue to play all right, but you know, a little bit more tapes out. How do we game plan for this guy? How do we not allow guys like Kittle get wide open? The Commanders defense is probably the team for the job, the defense for the job there. So I think they have a pretty solid outing, but not as solid of an outing as the 49ers defense against Heineke. So I'm gonna go 20 to 16. Seven seems like a little, little too much to me, though. I mean, I could see the scenario where the Niners just dominate, but. I mean, they dominated the Seahawks last week, and they still don't what they beat them by eight. So, uh, should stay within that seven there. Uh, Eagles and Cowboys end up going with the one point squeaker. It's going to be Gardner Minshew instead of Jalen Hurts. Uh, but the Cowboys, and I think people are focused on that, but the Cowboys are very, very beat up as well. Uh, you know, and the Eagles are just a well coached team. Gardner Minshew is a very solid backup. Uh, and there's really no there's no tape out on him. And the problem is, it hurts his running ability is really, really good. Minshew can scramble. But that that you know take away Hertz's is running ability. You know you're, you're taking away a lot of points this year. Uh, but I still think it'll be close. Uh, just a big game, rival game here. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys though. I'd be going with the Eagles if Hertz was playing. But that was a big reason for that is because the Cowboys are pretty beat up too. But so if every if both teams were fully healthy, I don't know what I'd be going with. Maybe maybe it'd be something like this actually. But I'm gonna go Cowboys 24, Eagles 23, and a squeaker. Eagles are getting four and a half points. I think they have a shot to win the game still, even with Minshew in there. Maybe that's bold. But uh, four and a half seems like a bit. I think it should be a close game. I, I don't see the Cowboys like you know destroying them or anything like that. No, four and a half doesn't really say that, but. Uh, I'm going to go a tight game here, but the Cowboys win him. Raiders and Steelers. Uh, Steelers are minus three. I have that, or minus two and a half. I have them winning by three. So really cutting it cl close on that one. I know some people out there are picking the Raiders to win this one. I'm feeling the Steelers, though. I think they'll play very solid defense. Another game in the cold here. Uh, Raiders could focus on Josh Jacobs, which, yeah, which Steelers run defense is going to show up. You know, last week they dominated a very good Panthers uh, rush offense. The week before they could not stop J.K. Dobbins. They just couldn't stop him. Uh, you know, so which one's going to show up? And no game plan. The game plan was the key last week. It was it was it was very good against the Panthers. I mean, counting on to having a good game plan, maybe stacking the box here. Um, and stopping Josh, not stopping him, but slowing down Josh Jacobs and the Steelers. Kenny Pickett coming back. Uh, you know, the Raiders' defense not the greatest uh, on the planet here, but they get that extra play, win that game. That defense makes the extra play too. T.J. Watt and the boys. Highsmith's been playing really well. Um, so I'm going to go. And the Raiders get going early. They really fall off. Playing a tough defense. I don't think they'll do enough here. So 2017 Steelers, but it's really I wouldn't touch it when it comes to the spread. Another one of those. Packers and Dolphins. The Packers are kind of rolling right now, and you kind of can 
feel it a little bit. You can see it. Aaron Rodgers and the boys, you know, sneaking in the playoffs. Kind of can see it. But then again, we got to calm down a little bit. They played the Bears and they played the Rams. And the Rams was Monday night in, in Lambeau in the cold. Um, you know, now they play a much, much, even though they're struggling right now, just a much better team, much better offense and defense maybe than, than one of those teams uh, in the Dolphins, who did play pretty well against the Bills last week. I'm going to go with the Dolphins winning by seven. I didn't have the offense to put up points against the Packers' defense, which is a little beat up. I'm well, missing Rashawn Gary. is going to be big here. Uh, it's been kind of big, but it's going to show more. Uh, and then and, you know, they put some good things on on tape when it comes to running the football, You know, things on the ground here. So maybe the Packers think, like, we got to worry about most of a little bit here, but mainly defend the pass. So it is a little tricky. Um, I'm going to go Dolphins. I don't like the matchup for the Packers. I'm going to go Dolphins on Christmas at home, 27-20. If the Packers win this game, uh, I'd say watch out. I know I know they need to keep winning and they need some things to happen. I'd say watch out in terms of them with their specific games the rest of the year. They play the Vikings and the Lions. Those are tough matchups. You can argue that maybe they're, they're tougher teams than the Dolphins, maybe one of them. Uh, but I think this matchup, just the specific, the, the, how they line up on the field in Miami compared to those ones being home, this is the toughest one. So if they pull this one off, the Packers, I'd say watch out with them and the rest of their games there. But I got the Dolphins covering the four. I like I like them in this matchup here. Um, it's definitely going to be tougher for the Packers than the Bears uh, and, uh, and the Rams the last couple games. Uh, second Christmas game is a uh, Jesus, yeah. Uh, I, got, I got this a tough one to pick. I got the Rams winning 17-16. Uh, the Broncos are favored by two and a half, so that, that makes it tricky here. Um, so I have the Rams winning, so obviously the plus two and a half is looking pretty decent. I, you know, it's If that bumps up to three, I'd be all over because then you got kind of that insurance there. But the Rams have a good shot to win this game. They should It should be really, really close. That two and a half you know, looks pretty decent. Again, I wish it was three, but I wish it was more than that. But, um, yeah, I, I just kind of a gut feeling here. What what's on paper? What's set? What's bad for picking the Rams is their offense line was already depleted. It got even more depleted, and the Broncos' de- defense in general, with their pass rush, is very very solid. So they really should get after it. So that almost just that alone says Broncos. But something about you know it being in L.A. They don't have to worry about the cold like last week against the Packers and Lambeau. Um, you know, Russell Wilson back. He struggled against good defenses. I still view the Rams as a very solid defense. Like they both defenses should make some plays. They both might even score. They might set their offenses up to score. Uh, Murray went wild last game. It's a big reason why the Broncos won. I, I don't think he goes wild in this game. Just the Rams being home. If it was in Denver, I go to the Broncos. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I just a gut feeling I'm going to Rams. But the Broncos pass rush could just blow everything up dominate that Rams offensive line and that is a, you know when I think about that I almost want to go Broncos but Rams at home I got I got a feeling here so that's where I'm going to go with that one uh I like the Bucks I like the Bucks minus six and a half as well Trace McSorley's that, that line's probably about to go up uh Trace McSorley's playing quarterback for the Cardinals he was awful last week like really bad like I'm still confused on how they don't have Strevler over him still it's a big difference in my opinion um Bucks defense will game plan well. They'll blitz McSor- McSorley. They won't let just you know Connor can run, but they won't let him beat him alone. Um, no one to get the you know McSorley's not going to really get the ball to Hopkins enough. I don't expect them to score many points at all. Uh, and the Cardinals are pretty beat up. Their pass rush went off last week. Didn't really matter, but their pass rush went off. So that's something to watch. Kind of getting after Brady because we know they'll be in pass situations where we can uh, they can obviously rush the passer because the Buccaneers are obviously passing because they run the least in the NFL, and they're pretty stupid with that. Maybe they run a little bit more this week. I could see that. They run a little bit more this week, uh, but I think they'll have some success uh, moving the ball, maybe more field goals and touchdowns, but uh, I'm very confident with the Bucs getting back on track with this one. 23-10, uh, that's 6.5. I, I, I like that right at this second, I like that it's sitting under 7. It's going to go up. I like that it's sitting just under seven. I feel really good about that. Uh, and then Monday night, uh, it's a four and a half spread. I have the Chargers winning by six. I could see just a weird feeling. I could see the Colts winning this game, just dominating on the ground. And they they play pretty good pass defense, even though they did not in the second half of that last game. They gave up a record amount of passing yards, uh, but they do overall play pretty good pass defense. So maybe they slow the Chargers down. Maybe they run the ball, keep them off the field. In the chart, you know, it's going to be Nick Foles for the Colts. I don't really think that's a difference. I don't think it really changes much. But I think the Chargers 
uh, make make plays on defense and we create a turnover or two and that can help their offense out a bit. So that I have them just covering that. Uh, this could be a trap game. This kind of feels like a trap game. But the Colts, I just can't trust them. They choke too much. The Chargers is a much better team. They're rolling right now. I have to pick the Chargers going 26-20 with them. And then kind of recapping against spread picks a lot that I just would not touch. Uh, Jags, I have winning the game. Plus one and a half looks pretty decent there. Uh, Bills minus nine, I wouldn't touch it. I have them winning by 10. I w- wouldn't touch that one. Uh, Browns minus two and a half, I kind of like. I like that it's under It's under three. They should win by, you know, around that, around that, above the two and a half. Uh, Texans plus four, would not touch it. I have the Titans winning by three. I wouldn't touch that. Seahawks plus 10. Uh, it's a little scary. It just seems like a lot. It is a little scary, though, because the Chiefs offense could just score. I mean, they have potential to score an insane amount of points against Seahawks defense, but um, 10 seems like a lot. Giants plus four. I'm cutting it close. I have the Vikings winning by two, but uh, chances are that game is pretty damn tight. Bengals minus three I like. I like the matchup for them. Uh, Lions minus two and a half. I wouldn't touch it. Could see the Panthers winning, but I do have the Lions winning by a field goal. Falcons plus seven and a half. I I wouldn't touch that one at all. If Lamar Jackson plays and you're still getting it around that range, I would take the Ravens for sure. So it's weird. Right now I have the Falcons plus seven and a half, but I wouldn't touch it unless I'm taking the Ravens with Lamar. So that's an interesting one. Commanders plus seven. No, no, I don't know if I love that one, but the Commanders shouldn't lose by more than seven. I have them losing by less than that. They should not lose by by more than seven. It's possible, though. Eagles plus four and a half. Uh, it's kind of a mystery because we don't know what we're going to get from Minshew, but I think it'll be tight. I think it'll be tight, so it's tough. Steelers, I would not touch. have them winning by a field goal. Uh, Dolphins minus four, I kind of like. I kind of like it. Uh, I think it's a bad match for the Packers. It's uh, Dolphins are home on Christmas. I think Tua, Tyreek, these guys have a day. They also should be able to run the ball. I, I think they can make plays on defense as well. So I like Dolphins minus four. Um, it's not my favorite one, though. I t- told you about some of the ones I like. Uh, Rams plus two and a half. I think they can win the game. They could lose by field goal. Then you lose the bat, so it's a little tricky, though. I love the Bucks minus six and a half. I love that it's sitting under seven right now. Chargers minus four and a half. I think a lot of people are going to like the Chargers. They're going to see Chargers minus four and a half against those Colts, Nick Foles. I'm going to jump all over that. It it's, it's it looks good at first glance, and I do have them covering. I'm winning by six, but it can be a trap game, so I'd probably stay away from that one. Just something about that one where it could be a little bit of a trap. So, uh, yep, those are my picks here in week 16. Starting to get in that playoff mode here. I can't wait for our playoff content. We have off-season content rolling out right now as well. So join us for all that. Head over to the channel. Check it out. Like, subscribe to No Game Zombie. Much, much appreciated. A lot of content on our Twitter, especially if you're a super follower. Follow us on Twitter. There's a link pinned in the comments directly to that. Uh, but that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.